What is up, everybody? Welcome to another Speedcast um, interview session. Um, today, I have a very talented actor. Um, you know him as Isaac Bowen on uh, the DC um, DC Universe Star Girl or CW Star Girl. Uh, thank you so much for joining. So um, we have the super talented uh, Max France, and he's going to be joining us. Uh, fairly soon here. Thank you everyone for joining and thank you for everyone that just watched the previous Speedcast interview uh, with Hina Khan. Um, uh, I'm so happy that you know they're getting all the recognition. Oh here we go. Let's go ahead and bring Max on. All right. Yeah, hey. How Hi. you doing, man? Uh, pretty good. Yourself? I'm, I'm well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for joining my Speedcast. Uh, I truly appreciate your time. Um, how, how you been, man? Are you, are you, are you doing good? Are you, are you binge watching anything? Are you, are you, uh, are you watching any anime or any, are you reading any manga? Uh, as a matter of fact, yeah. Um, I started binge watching some of the uh, Dragon Ball series again, and uh, yeah, that's about. I mean, that's about it, really. I did watch some a couple horror movies here and there, but other than that, cool. Oh, nice. Uh, what what's your what's your favorite uh, anime? Is there any particular? I mean, Dragon Ball is is that one of your favorite, or do you have a particular one? Or um, so in terms of my favorite, it's either Dragon Ball or Attack on Titan. I can never really choose oh. between two. Nice. Um, I don't know if you've recently. I, I've recently watched um, One Punch Man, and then I watched um, all the JoJo Bizarre Adventures, and um, and I, you know, My Hero Academia. I'm trying to think what else I've watched recently. Um, uh, Initial D, and man, anime is awesome. And I, I've just uh, been, you know, binge watching so much. And uh, but Attack on Titan, man, uh, you can't really get connected to any of those characters yeah it's different doesn't it <laughs> well you know uh, i'm so happy for you first and foremost congratulations on this season of star girl congratulations um you've you've been you've been awesome in it um you know i just i just talked to your your tv mom uh right before uh, uh this live and you know you um uh you know, you, you play a character that is being bullied, but um, at, towards the end there, you take, you know, you, you listen to your mom's advice, if you will, and you fight yeah. back. And, and I love that about your character, man. Can you talk a little bit about your, um, you know, the uh, the growth of your character throughout the season? Um, well, let's see. So when it comes to playing Isaac, um, a lot of that did immediately come naturally because me and him are relatively similar so um that was definitely fun um so towards the beginning he starts off like we're introduced to him as like this um like little band geek that was just you know ca um, casually playing a tuba in the hallway which was actually a really hard scene to film because um <laughs> whenever i would okay so i never played the tuba i just knew how to hold it and how to make noise with it. I never really learned how to, you know, make notes with the knobs and what have you. Um, but yeah, um, I think at first uh, the director wanted me to, um, you know, play the tuba a little bit. Like as my mom was like uh, showing me some, uh, like a note sheet or whatever it's called. And I would, you know, I would play it, but tubas don't necessarily have the most pleasant noise in the world so everyone was just laughing and um eventually they just said like all right we'll we'll do something with it later so um so yeah he starts off like that and you know we progressively like see him here and there um i don't think the scene with me in the marching band ever made it to the actual uh uh, CW, like, on um, live TV, but, um, yeah, we sort of see him progress. He's always been, like, really shy, really embarrassed, um, especially when his mom would, like, pamper him and stuff like that. 
Um, yeah. I love those scenes, by the way, because if my mom told me that she loved me in front of the whole student body, your reaction would have been my reaction. Like, oh, mom, like, you know, like, <laughs> <off and burst. laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, not a whole lot of uh, faking to go there. I was, I was kind of embarrassed in, re in real life, too. Um, because that definitely sounds like something my actual mom would do. And so, yeah, that was, that was pretty fun. Um, then, yeah, then we, but like behind the scenes, he's always getting picked on and stuff like that. And we later see him like break down crying, um, in front of his mom. And yeah, there's a really, really wholesome scene, you know, um, yeah. about, um, revenge and what have you but um yeah so i'm not entirely sure if i'm gonna do ever i'm gonna ever do anything with the fiddle but i mean i got a pretty good swinging arm so <laughs> yeah you, you do man and you know your your opening scene in 13 uh where you finally take matters into your own into your own hands i thought that was very uh uh it was a very impactful scene to start off that season finale. Um, can you talk about filming that scene that day? Um, was it just one take? How many takes did you guys do for that scene? Um, I don't know any exact numbers, but it was a lot. Um, and, okay, so a, a thing about the tuba that um, I'll probably get into be um, better detail later, but um, since I was supposed to be in the marching band, that wasn't necessarily the right tuba for me to have because like if you see like tubas and marching bands like they're the ones that like wrap around like your uh like upper body or whatever and you play them like that because like they're supposed to rest on your shoulders um the one i had i was supposed to carry but like traditionally you're supposed to use like ones like those on your lap so um uh moving around with that thing was kind of hard but um uh yeah so you know, I was a bit nervous because, you know, I'm I'm throwing a however so many pound brass instrument at um, this guy Sam, who was who was really cool to me uh, behind the scenes, uh, great guy. And uh, the makeup department like went t went to town with like a bunch of blood and what have you. Um, <laughs> like I think in the like in the later takes, like you see them just like. Like I saw them just like slathering like a bunch of like fake blood across the, uh, I think it's called the bell of the tuba and sort of like around the rim and I thought that was pretty brutal, but um, yeah so you know faking how to uh, faking a you know bash on the head with the tuba was a bit nervous because I didn't want to actually hurt the dude but um, yeah he pulled it off and uh, yeah so. Uh, you didn't you didn't know beforehand that that was going to be the you didn't know beforehand that was going to be the opening scene of 13 right uh no no um i never really thought of like where it would actually be or if it was even going to be included but um yeah i was actually surprised that the first thing we saw was uh me clobbering a dude with a tuba <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah that was pretty fun yeah. That was awesome, dude. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for you uh, for landing this role uh, okay. and for doing such a great job. So I got, I got to ask you when you, when you read for this role from, you know, most of the, your, your colleagues have been telling me that they didn't know what they were reading for. Um, did you even know this was for a DC show? Did you, did you know anything of that uh, in regards I, to that? I didn't even know if it was superhero related at all because um well, the one I got was supposed to be like this wholesome scene between like me and my mother. Um, but, um, you know, there was nothing about, um, okay, well, actually there was something about bullying, but nothing that involved like, you know, magical musical instruments or something like that. Um, but yeah, I had no idea at the time and little did I know, like hardly anyone did. So um, yeah, that was pretty shocking when I found out, like I got a call back and they said, dude, you're being on DC. And I was like, whoa. Because <laughs> so DC is like really well known, right? Like there's a lot of people like going to be paying attention to that. So 
I was a bit nervous by that fact, but, um, you know, my uncle, like, had my back, like, the entire time, because he, like, loves DC, like, he uh, probably killed for, like, a rare issue or something like that, um, but he was, like, always, like, filling me in with, like, all these characters that we would just, like, find out about, like, as the episodes went on, so, he yeah. was really helpful with that, so. Now, when you told your uncle, I've landed this part, um, Isaac Bowen, did his mind just get blown, or what was his reaction? Uh, I, th I, I think he was trying to be supportive, but I feel like he was secretly going like, this lucky son of a, or, you know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he wanted to, like, strangle me. I mean, honestly, like, me and my uncle look almost identical, so really, I could have just, I... I would like jokingly ask him if like, you know, if he wanted to fill me, uh, fill me in for, um, you know, some stuff or, uh, yeah. So. <laughs> he was over Bad, cool. Oh, go ahead. Okay, well, uh, yeah, he was overall really helpful, like telling me like who these characters were because, um, okay. Well, I did hear, hear about Stargirl, Solomon Grundy and, you know, uh, some other characters, but, um, a lot of them were like really new to me because I didn't know about anyone called Sportsmaster or Wildcat or, you know, even the Fiddler. Okay, mm -hmm. that's kind of a lie because I remember like seeing like there like some memes about like people confusing the Riddler for the Fiddler. So. Uh huh. <laughs> now, ha have you personally ever played any instrument whatsoever in your life prior to this role? None that I would probably ever touch. Like, so I never really learned how to play anything, like, professionally. Like, I was never taught any. But I do play a little bit on the keyboard. But what little I know, I taught myself, so. Mm. I mean, you you sold it, dude. You definitely sold it on this show. Um, what do you think about, now, I don't know how much you can tell me. I mean, you could tell us, you know, during this live, but has... <sighs> Has anyone reached out to you about season two yet? Can you confirm anything? Uh, no, I cannot. <laughs> um, um, okay, so I would say I would let people know, but maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, um, yeah, that's fine because we know you signed an NDA. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, you know, I was I was curious to see what your, I mean, we saw your rage on thirteen, but. I was curious to see your reaction to finding out about your mom, you know, um, and hopefully we see that in season two. Um, I know there's probably something written already, you know, Jeff Johns probably has something in mind already, but, um, you know, and, and I don't know if you noticed, but when I advertised that I was going to do a live with you, I put the Fiddler Jr. question mark. Yeah, I did see that. So, um, I always felt like that was a scene, like, you know, me at least, like, finding out about my mom, like, I feel like that should have been a scene that was included, but, excuse me, um, but, uh, yeah, I'm sure that whatever they got, um, will be pretty cool, so, and I'll definitely try my best with that, too, so. So, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Max, this, this was your first official, um, TV series, right? This was like your first. Uh, how was the experience? Was it everything that you expected it to be? Because this was in your normal uh, run of the run of the mill, you know, um, TV series. It was this was a huge production. How was that moment? How did it feel? Um, did it feel like you were uh, in the major leagues? Was it overwhelming, or did you go in there with the mindset, "I got this." Well, so not only was that at my first ever shot at like, you know, like a TV series, that was my first ever like official acting gig. Because like in the past, I've done like uh, stage shows, some plays here and there. But when I found out what I was, I was going to be like, you know, shot with like a cast and crew, like cameras, lights and everything, I was pretty nervous. But um, I mean, I, that quickly went away because... Like, everyone was, like, so nice. Everyone was so uh, welcoming. Uh, the cast members I did meet, um, 
they were all super cool. And I honestly can't be more thankful of uh, Jeff, Jeff Johns for letting me do this. So, um, honestly, I had a lot of fun, but was pretty nervous the entire time because I felt like I had like a lot of pressure on me to make sure I do this and I do this good um, as best as I can. So, yeah. How, I mean, when you were on the set, and, and thank you for that, were you... <clears throat> When you saw, I mean, I don't know if you got to see Amy Smart or Luke Wilson and, and those guys, but uh, was there any moments when you were, like, geeking out? Did you did you kind of, like, breathe in that moment and, and cherish that moment? Did you have any moments like that on set? Uh, maybe not geeking out that much because I didn't really know that much except for what my uncle had told me. Um, so... Yeah, there were definitely like a lot of moments where um like um it was honestly like really cool cuz I would come to like a few script readings and um that's when I would like see everybody. Uh oh, did we freeze? We might have some connection issues you guys. Oh, there we go. Sorry, my phone's about to die. That was quick. No worries. Uh, okay. Was like, okay, we good, we good. Nope. Right, I'm gonna just do it like this. Okay. No, no worries. All right. Oh, um, no, flip, flip, flip it back, Max. Flip it back around. Can you flip it back? Like this? Oh uh, no, no, the <laughs> well, other way. I, yeah. I, mean, I would, but like the charger cord is like. There you go. Like sit up. All right. All right. I'm gonna just hold it. So, um, <laughs> uh, let's see. What was I saying? Or the script read. Oh, yeah. So um, everyone there was, like, also really cool. And there were definitely, like, some funny times during the uh, script reads. Like, the one I remember off the top of my head was when I was reading for episode 12, I think. And, you know, in the middle of the episode, there's a scene with me uh, um, uh, crying to my mom. Um, but I can't remember who this was, but... Um, this, uh, guy next to me, um, was, like, constantly, like, uh, laughing. He, like, he couldn't keep himself together, like, um, and stuff like that. And <laughs> so I was, like, reading the script, like, saying, like, you know, this guy, he keeps calling me a tuba turd. And this guy's, like, laughing right next to me, like, what's so funny? Um, and I'm, like, I'm, I'm breaking down in front of my mom and you're having a laugh, so. But, uh, yeah, so we just laughed it off, and, uh, yeah, that was pretty funny. I want you know to say... Oh, go ahead. Um, oh, go ahead. Go. I think I was done. It's okay. <laughs> well, you know, the dynamics between you and Hina uh, were amazing. Um, you know, did you guys do any test reads prior to landing the role? Because it, it was such a perfect you know, mother and son dynamic. Um, you know, can, was there, did you guys do any like reads uh, together prior to getting the, the role? Uh, yeah, we did, a, we did a little uh, rehearsing. I feel like we could have done more and we should have done more, but um, I'll admit like my mom and my dad um, really hit it off with Hannah because, you know, she's playing my mom. So, um, yeah, like, we were all just, we would, like, just, like, laugh, have a good time, have a good time, like, uh, talk and stuff. Um, so the, the dynamic, like, sort of uh, came across from that because Hannah was, like, overall, like, really cool to me. And she was probably my best friend on set. And, um, uh, yeah, so we did, like, a little uh, rehearsing for the last scene in episode 12. Um, because I had known prior that she was going to die. So I was like, oh, okay. So I wanted to make sure that, like, above all else, we get this scene, like, really good. Yeah. So, um, yeah. There wasn't any, like, tears or anything. I, I, I say that for later. But, um, yeah. You killed it, dude. You, you definitely killed all your scenes. Um, in your opinion... For next season, what do you think 
your character, where does he go in regards to, you know, if he finds out what Tigers did, I mean, if he finds out what Tigers did to his mom, do you see your character um, seek, you know, seeking out revenge or do you see your character maybe taking a different route? Um, so I think person. Um, but I think the one that I think was the most consistent was the fact that um, she died at um, Stargirl's house. So I feel like if I were to continue on, and I hope I do, I hope I do, um, uh, that, like, they'd frame it to seem like it was Stargirl or one of the JSA that killed her. So I feel like I might you know, go attack them uh, first, but um, I think later on the truth will come out, so. But as far as, um, well, there's this one thing that I, I did want to mention. Um, as far as, like, the whole thing with the tuba and the fiddle, um, so I think, fr from what I got, the scene in episode 12 and 13 um, hinted that I would probably be using the tuba for a little bit, but, um, I will mention that I really hated that thing. Um, like, it was really heavy. It was like, a really, like, big chore to, like, carry around on set. But, um, yeah, so I'm hoping... So, like, I've, I've seen, like, people, like, joke about it where, um, you know, if I were to continue with the tuba, they wouldn't call me the fiddler. They'd call me the tubler or something like that, so. <laughs> I, I, have, I have heard that. Yeah, so... Um, you're hoping I get the fiddle, at least eventually, but, um, I don't Me know. too, dude. Me too. I hope, I hope you continue with the legacy of the, of the fiddle. That would be awesome. Now, someone just commented, commented that you would definitely seek out revenge. Another person just commented that, uh, your theory is a very smart one. And I totally agree, uh, in regards to, um, you know, making it look like Stargirl or one of the members of the new, um, Justice Society killed your mom, uh, and, and then you you know you seek out revenge against them. Yeah. Um, but man, I, I definitely hope that you do get the fiddle. I just can't see you being, you know, the the tubler that, you know. And, and I've heard people talk yeah. about it, you know. But th that would be pretty cool. Now you've seen all the positive reaction that that Star Girl has received. Yeah. You guys did something that is very hard to do. You guys got a 91% um, fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which is very hard to do. Um, this being your first your first official role, um, how does that make you feel to be to be part of this world worldwide phenomenon, if you will, TV series? So I'll admit there's there's a bit of nervousness in there because. Oh crap! It's it's getting like huge, but um, honestly, like the positive like reception to not only just me but like the rest of the cast and the entire show was outstanding. Like I I never expected that, and um, uh, honestly, I think the future of Star Girl is you know really bright. Um, I feel like um, Jeff and SCW can like take the take the show and uh, go a lot of good places. So. And I'm really excited to, like, see what happens um, in it. it. Assuming I get, like, even if I get to play Isaac again or not, like, I, I can't wait to see what happens, so. I can't wait to see you next season, man. And, and I truly hope they bring you back uh, because there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of story still for you, I think. There's, there's, there's a lot of story for you, you know. Um, but I got I to gotta ask this. Are you are you tech, Are you ready for the fandom? Are you ready for, you know? I don't know if you've ever been to a con. You know, you mentioned that you love horror horror movies. Uh, you love anime. I don't know if yep. you've ever been to like a, a con before for any of those genres. But are you ready for the the fandom that's coming with with this role from the DC um, side of things? Uh, yeah, honestly, I feel like. Um... Uh, that would be pretty cool. And if I were to go to like uh, Comic Con or something like that for Star Girl, I feel like 
that'd be awesome because I've never been to a convention before, even though I like really wanted to. But um, uh, yeah, but I did. I did. Uh, so someone did uh, reach out to me and ask me um, uh, how would I feel if like people started cosplaying as like the different characters on uh, Star Girl and. Um, I thought that'd be pretty uh, cool, but um, then uh, she hit me with, what if someone was cosplaying you? And it'd be a bit scary, but um, yeah, I think uh, I welcome it. I welcome it. I think it'd be really cool. And uh, yeah, so here's hoping that Sargul goes like a lot of places, so yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, man, I think you're going to have lots of fun once this pandemic is over and you do go to these cons because, you know, you being from the, you know, you like anime and you like horror. I'll tell you this. Um, you'll watch a Wonder, Wo Wonder Woman panel with, um, you know, Gal Gadot. And then the next panel is going to be you guys. And then you'll see the next panel be the next Annabelle movie um, or like the Conjuring movie. And then it's going to be James Wan walking right in. <laughs> so it's it's pretty cool man i'm gonna tell you you're gonna have lots of fun because uh at these cons it's not just about uh the comic book genre but it's also about the horror genre and the anime genre so uh i i hope that you get to experience that and and i truly hope that you you know i get to uh see you at a con one day um i do go to the cons out here in la you know especially the big ones like san diego and la uh and WonderCon. Sure. And, and and oh and anime expo out here is huge man it's 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 the biggest yeah. anime convention have, have you heard of anime expo uh yeah i've heard of a lot of the big ones but that would come with a sense of like oh man because you know i can never go and uh so but uh yeah um that would be really cool and hey if i see you um uh we'll definitely like hang out or something so um, definitely definitely I'm, I'm looking forward to it uh let's get to some fan questions uh so someone's asking who's your favorite comic book character i don't know if i should answer that because here's the thing uh i don't i i think i think i might get maimed if i say anyone oops if i say anyone who's not from dc uh, so let's just go with Batman. Perfect. <laughs> I hear I, you, man. I mean, I, I mean, I still love Batman. Like, um, I personally grew up with like the Keaton movies and stuff like that. So those were always like a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a great answer, man. Uh, what, uh, what are you expecting from your character in season two? And you, you touched on that a little bit already, but yeah. someone's, someone's asking. Um, so I might, so I feel like I might have a complete, like, personality change. Um, you know, I'll probably, like, sort of have more of the, you know, angsty stuff that I, uh, uh, sort of showed off, like, in, um, uh, episode 13. So, yeah. um, which I think would be super fun to play. And honestly, I've always wanted to play a, uh, super villain. So, um, because, you know, it's like, you know, no rules apply to them. They can literally do anything they wanted. So it's a lot, it's a whole lot of fun to like, you know, let loose. So, um, Definitely. so yeah, doing that was like also really fun. So I'm, I'm thinking that like, there might be some other stuff like that, but, um, okay. So I will touch on one thing though. Um, so I didn't see this in the, uh, live version, but, in, it might have appeared on uh, DC Universe or something, but um, in episode 13, during that scene, um, like after I whacked the dude and um, I think his name is Mr. The Bean, the, the teacher like tries to escort me away. Um, yeah. there, was a scene, there was a scene that they didn't show where um, Artemis, um, Tigress uh, and Sportsmaster's kid, um, she stopped me and say and said like, "Hey Isaac, it's about time you fought back." And you know, I glance over at her, I give her a quick smile, and um, he continues walking away, and then the ground splits. So I, so they may or may not like dwell into that a little bit, but I thought that was pretty cool. Sort of so like you that. know, yeah. 
So Hina Hina kind of hinted a little. I mean, she was. We were joking about uh, a little bit earlier in regards to you and Artemis's relationship. Um, I don't know if you saw that, but um, if, if, if there's a spark there, <laughs> I mean, how awkward would that be? Because yeah. you know, technically, her her mom took care of your mom. Uh, what do you think about that? Issues. <laughs> <laughs> As there wasn't any awkwardness already on the show, you know, we we alluded to two two scenes this season where, you know, um, Shiv, uh, uh, Meg was hanging out with, you know, um, with Star Girl all day, knowing she was Star Girl, but pretending she didn't know. So that was kind of awkward. And then you know, Star Girl inviting over Icicle and Icicle Junior for dinner, um, or her mom inviting him over. Got it. <clears throat> that was. That was awkward too, right? Yeah, I got a, like a huge Texas Chainsaw uh, vibe from that too. So yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, so that that would be interesting for next season. You know, if there is a spark between you and Artemis, and then you know, it, once you do find out, if you find out that it was her mom that you know that took out your mom, that would be very uh, very awkward. Um, which suit on the show do you think is the coolest and do you want to get a suit for next season? Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Um, personally, like, I think my favorite suit might have to be either Brainwaves or um, Wildcats. Because, um, um, you know, Wildcat takes a lot from Black Panther or vice versa whichever came first but um and you know i always thought that'd be pretty cool although i well okay my hey, my other hand's busy but i wouldn't be able to resist going wakanda forever and what have you um, <laughs> so, um but yeah i feel like if i had like brainwave suit that would kind of complement the fact that like so the fiddler is like really associated with green so i mean if i could yeah. just steal that maybe tailor it a little bit for my size and and just wear that. That'd be cool. Yeah, definitely. That that would be cool. And I can't wait to see you in a suit next season, man. Um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, someone just said, uh, sending positive vibes your way. That's Thank nice. Uh, I think we have another question in the chat. Let's look. Let's look in here. Oh, here it is. So what other character would you play on Stargirl besides Isaac? Uh, Solomon Grundy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he is a badass, right? I mean, yeah, but I don't, yeah, he was all CGI, I think. So, um, but again, <laughs> um, if I happen to grow like another five feet and get jacked, then sweet. Um, <laughs> but let's see. Uh, our man is pretty cool. And, um, yeah. uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Maybe, oh crap, what's his name? Dragon King. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so I yeah I completely forgot about Dragon King. I think I think his suit might be my favorite actually. Um, With the blood stains. Yeah, there's that, and like he has like the cool like mask, and he's like reptilian like underneath, and I thought that was pretty <laughs> freaky. So <laughs> it it yeah. definitely has a, a a taste. I mean, a, it feels like a, a horror genre kind of like with his character, right? Yeah, um, yeah, and I love it. He's like really creepy, so. Um, he he might need some like parental counseling, but other than that, then yeah, he's awesome. What 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 was it, uh, Max? That got you into into acting? Was there something that inspired you? Was there like a particular horror movie, or was there a, a movie, or was there a moment in your life that you said, "Hey, that's what I want to do"? Yes. So my favorite movie of all time was, I mean, is Jaws. And um, I, I remember when I was younger thinking that, like, 
when I was younger, I didn't really get a good grasp of what was going on. All I knew was there's this giant monster thing in the water that just, you know, takes people underwater and there's like red Kool-Aid in the water or some stuff that, yeah. But um, as I sort of grew older, I realized that like, I would like watch like a lot of movies I would uh, come out and I would sort of like see like the difference in acting um, between the two. And I figured like, huh, maybe I could do that. So uh, then I got into doing uh, some stage plays. And yeah, that was always really fun, so. That's awesome, dude, that, that's awesome. Uh, Jobs is definitely a movie that will inspire you to, to, to get into the business. Now, I noticed, you know, that, you know, you talked about being a horror genre fan. Now, I noticed your Michael Myers mask back there. Um, I'm a bit of a Freddy guy myself. Um, I love Michael Myers too. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. if Michael Myers were to fight Freddy, we've seen Freddy versus Jason. What about Freddy versus Michael Myers? Who wins and why? All right, I'm a geek out now. I'm a geek out now. Um, it really just depends on which variation of the two we're dealing with, because. When it comes to Freddy Krueger, we never really see him, I mean, we do eventually, but we never really see him, like, die and stay dead, you know, like, you know, in the first movie, you beat him by, like, just like, ignoring him. Um, in the second movie, um, you know, just get him out of the guy who he's possessing. Um, third movie, I think that was when they had to, like, bury his bones and, like, you know, set him on fire or what have you. Um, Dream Warriors, yeah. Yeah, and the movie after that, show him his reflection, and then the movie after that, I, I, I completely forgot. So, but I think Freddy's main power comes from the fear, like, much like Pennywise. Um, yeah. So, if you were to go for original Michael Myers, he doesn't fear anything. So, Freddy would be kind of powerless against that, but then again, like, just because he's not afraid of him doesn't mean he can't do anything about it, so... Um, a fight between Freddy and Michael would be uh, pretty sweet. So, but <laughs> personally, I think Michael would come out on top just because he's, well, in the original concept of Michael, he's like this emotion, emotionless shape, right? And um, so I feel like, yeah, Freddy wouldn't be able to tackle that. But I mean, then again, he really shouldn't have been able to when it came to Jason because, you know, in that movie, they say that he's afraid of water even though he's been in it like several times yeah so, so i think out of like the big three between freddie jason and michael i feel like if they all went for a free-for-all freddie would lose first but um I, I you know what i respect that i mean yeah i don't want to i don't want to knock at anybody however when it comes to jason or michael i would be rooting for michael but I can't guarantee he's going to win. <laughs> but I feel like they should have done Michael and Jason first. I think I feel like yeah. that would be like also a really cool matchup. I'm I'm surprised they haven't created a, a a video game. I know that they've had some DLCs, but just strictly horror genre, you know, characters, right? That would be pretty cool. I I think uh, you know, on the topic of we're talking about the Fiddler, we're talking about Star Girl. Mm -hmm. Out of all three of those characters, Jason, Michael, and Freddie. Who's got the best um, theme song? Michael. <laughs> I mean, like, I think my favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Michael. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Michael. Um, John Carpenter's like original score was phenomenal, uh, or well, really good. I don't know if I said that right. Um, uh, I will say. It's not really like a theme per se, but you know everyone recognizes uh, Jason. Um, yeah, yeah. And Freddie has the jump rope girls. So, um, but I think in terms of music, it's uh, Michael. Yeah, I, I I agree with you on that one definitely. Um, so you, you talked about you know arrangement. I mean, you talked about composers, and I, I know I think that's one of the things that you love too, right? You like. Uh, you know, the, the, like John, I don't know if you like John Williams, but that guy is like famous for in music for so many movies. But um, in your opinion, which is the best? Uh, 
Like best soundtrack or best like composer? Like a, like a written score, like a score of a movie. There's so many, right? Hmm. Uh, uh, hmm. So I mean, Hans, Hans Zimmer is one that's out there. John yeah. Williams. Um, Danny Elfman's also really good. Um, oh yeah, Danny Elfman is really amazing. Uh, I can't remember the lady's name that just did the new Joker for Joaquin Phoenix. She's amazing. Yeah, there was that. Um, so I feel like if I had to choose like like two soundtracks I can listen to for the rest of my life, it would either have to be Star Wars or Pirates of the Caribbean. So, oh yeah. Um, Hans Hans Zimmer did Pirates, right? Am I? Uh, he wasn't the only one. Like, um, I can't remember his name, but. Uh, someone else uh, like made the first score, but then Hans Zimmer took over it and uh, mm. wrote the next three. And then a, another guy, I can't remember his name, uh, made the fifth movie. Oh, my phone's lying. Would that be something that you would like to get into uh, as well, um, Max? I mean, would you like to write scores for movies? Is that something that, that piques your interest? Uh. Not really. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I mean, so, like, I guess I could be considered a creative person, but not really when it comes to making stuff original. Like, I'll definitely, like, add on to stuff and, like, maybe recreate stuff that already exists. Like, I think that would be really cool. But as far as making my own stuff, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. So. Mm. Uh, I know that you're excited. Are you excited about the new Halloween movie that's coming out? Uh, Halloween Kills, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I love anything Halloween, but although I will admit, I feel like Halloween 2018 would have been, like, a really good ending. But, you know, then again, it's like, horror movie, horror movie franchises don't necessarily know when to end, really. But, um, uh, yeah, I'm still kind of bummed that it got pushed up to 2021, but, um, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you, just gotta, you just got a compliment, dude. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, someone just said that you're their idol. And if you could say hello to them. Hey, I got tested for Corona recently, and I don't know if it's possible or negative. And, or, and Max, you, know, you are my idol. Can you please say hello to me? Hello. And I, I hope you are, don't actually have Corona. And, but if you do, you have my best wishes, and I hope uh, you get better. Um, because I feel like Corona is like, unfortunately, something that it's it's like really hard to avoid, unfortunately. But um, yeah. But then again, like you know, there's like all this stuff, like none of the other diseases have like gone away. So. Um, yeah. We we got yeah. two more. So, sorry, we got two more questions. I'm gonna pull them up. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Can you see the question? What size of junior are gonna do now that both his parents are gone? So it might just be me, but I don't actually know if the, the fiddler or my dad uh, actually died. But because um, like I feel like it was it was hinted at, but like it was never confirmed. But if that's the case, and I'm an orphan, um, hmm, that blows. Uh, you know, it'd be kind of like crazy. If like uh, Artemis took me in and I started living with her family, that that'd be would, crazy. That would, that would be pretty crazy. <laughs> um, I would love to see that because the awkwardness. <laughs> you know what happens, and you know what's going to happen eventually. So yeah, but like you know, if it does happen, then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no one really wins there, so. But uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, this thing just not want to stay up. Sorry. Uh, it's okay. Someone just asked, "Who would you like to see play your father if he actually, if he's actually alive in season two? So as little as we saw him, and like as little as we hinted at him, um, um. I don't, know, I don't know his name, but the guy who, like, uh, we see, like, as a fiddler in, like, flashbacks and um, uh, on that picture, 
in the uh, like the conference room in the uh, tunnels. Um, from as little as we, as we saw him, like he was really, like he really did a lot. Like um, within like that few seconds, like in the flashback, as like Pat and like the others are like training together, and he's like talking about like all these other villains. Like, I remember seeing this guy, like, go to town on the violin. I'm like, oh, boy, am I going to have to do that? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I don't know if he actually plays, but he looked really skilled, and he was very convincing. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, if it turns out that guy is alive, um, or well, the fiddler is alive, um, then, yeah, I'd love to see uh, that guy come around. But, um, yeah, so... We got another question. Um, how did it feel to play Isaac? Um, so like I mentioned earlier, like playing Isaac um, was honestly a lot of fun because uh, me and him were are like really pretty close when it comes to um, um, like personality. And um, but the only difference is I wouldn't be using a tuba if I were to be in band but um um let's see um it was definitely like a lot of fun and uh it was definitely something that i don't it was definitely an experience that i don't think can be recreated because it was my fr my first ever time acting and you know playing uh this character and getting like so much positive feedback because um a lot of people have like reached out to me and like, uh, you know, given me compliments and like uh, praise. And I'm like, I just, I can't be any more thankful. So um, uh, yeah, it was definitely crazy. So. And well-deserved by the way, well-deserved, well-deserved, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Can we have, here's another question. How cool was it to work with Jeff Johns? Jeff. Okay, so as far as uh, superhero uh, fanatics go, this guy was really, really, really cool. He was really nice to me, and I think, like, his work is, like, phenomenal. Um, I still don't know if I said that right. Um, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm not used to using big words, so, so excuse me. Um, oh, you do, man. But yeah, Jeff Johns was like always really cool. He was really encouraging. And, um, you know, you could always tell that like this project like meant a lot to him. Yeah. And um, yeah, honestly, like I hope that um, um, we gave it our best. I really hope that um, he's proud of um, uh, what we accomplished because I really, I really felt like there was, all, I was also uh, we were all like really tasked with like bringing this dream of his to fruition. So I really hope we did. And, um, but yeah, the guy was like really cool and, and I still can't thank him enough for giving me the opportunity to do this. It was a lot of fun. And, um, yeah. Excellent. That That's great. Uh, let's see. I think we have two more questions. Uh, someone said, my dream job is to play an actor when I grow up. And Max, do you have any suggestions on how to get a role? Um, so when I uh, got the part as Isaac, um, I feel like it was more or less luck than skill because I'm sure there was like, you know, another good number of people trying to audition for him. So um, while skill is definitely a factor, like, um, I'd say definitely, um, you know, like get acting, acting class and, you know, get some practice, build some confidence because a lot of the skill that actors have didn't come naturally. So, um, yeah, there's definitely like a lot of that you'll, uh, want to do, but really it's also about like putting yourself out there. Um, cause, um, uh, yeah, so I wasn't really, I wasn't really known outside of, you know, the people who were like related to me and affiliated with, um, you know, my family, but, um, you know, when I got the part, it was, it sort of all just sort of settled in, like, 
Um, uh, yeah, so honestly, I would recommend um, practicing, honing your skill, and um, I do some like theater plays and stuff like that. Um, that that really helps. Mm -hmm. um, it helped me. So, but um, yeah, there a lot of luck is gonna be uh, involved. And say you're competing against someone who's like more well known, that'll probably cause some difficulty too. But um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, so, yeah, put yourself out there, build up some skill, get some confidence, that's really going to help, and, um, because if you're nervous, you might just choose, like, not to do it, um, which is something I almost did, because, um, when I heard that I was going to audition for this, uh, TV show, um, I was sort of reluctant, because I, you know, I'd taken a break from acting, and, um, you know, I sort of wanted to uh, continue on with, um, you know, like some school stuff, but um, I gave it some thought and I said, okay, sure, I'll do it. And um, yeah, lo and behold, here I am. So uh, yeah, so I think off the top of my head, that's the best advice I can give right now. And, and thank you for that. That's great advice. That is awesome advice. Um, and I'm very happy and I'm very excited um, for you. I'm happy that you got the role. I'm happy that you, you know, you change, you know, you, you put some thought into it and you went out for the role because I honestly can't see anyone else playing your, your, your part. Um, you. you, you were awesome, dude. Totally. You, 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 you killed it. Um, you. I just want to say, um, my last question to you is, do you want to say anything to your fans out there? um that have loved your you know um star girl in general and have loved you specifically your role do you want to say anything to your fans you guys mean a lot to me um like i remember like being reluctant to like sort of like release like a public instagram or like a social media um because i'm sort of someone who was like more reserved and um uh, not really a big fan of like attention but like honestly like i couldn't be more thankful like um everyone who's ever reached out to me everyone who's like shown uh star girl support um you guys are great and um even those even the ones who are just like watch the show and enjoy it um yeah we we couldn't none of us like not just me but like none of us would have gotten where we are if um um if it weren't for you guys so um uh yeah really just thank you. And we thank you, man. We thank you for for being who you are, for, for being on this show, for for making our lives a little bit, you know, especially right now during this pandemic, making our lives a lot better, having, you know, that outlet to watch Stargirl, especially, you know, the way that is being presented to us. Um, it's It's such a great show, man. It's so very well done. And, you know, I, I truly appreciate um, everything that you guys have done. Kudos to the entire cast and crew. Um, great job. Kudos to you. Um, you. You know, thank you so, so, so much for joining me today on my Speedcast. Uh, thank you for making the time. And if no you problem, do come man. out to LA, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, I just said, no problem, man. This was fun. And I appreciate you having me. Dude, I and I can't wait. Uh, if you come out to LA, you know, I you know, hit me up. I will be more than happy to um, to show you uh, what's going on out here. Especially if you come out to like Anime Expo. Um, I go to that con every year. Unfortunately, you know, I got canceled, but I do go to Anime Expo every year. If you want to hang out at Anime Expo, let me know. I'll be more than happy to um, to show you how you know the convention floor and everything. So, um, cool. thank you so much dude i truly appreciate i i wish i wish you and your family nothing but but health um and you know please be safe everyone out there wear a mask please be safe and max thank you so much you have a very enjoyable rest of your day okay thank you all right all right man take care dude you too. have a good one